Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, I have been um, challenged lately about this word, um, rib. Okay, we all know that in Genesis 2, that Genesis 2 tells us, of course, in the English translation, that God creates the woman from the rib of the first human being. Okay, now again, it is not the rib from the man. Okay, see, that is maybe that first mistake that people are making. It is not the rib of the man, it is the rib of the human being. And we have no indication whatsoever that this first human being that God created even in Genesis 2, that that was a man. We don't know that, okay? According to Philo, which I have said that before in my videos, according to Philo, um, who was 2,000 years ago, and he was a Hellenistic, um, Hellenistic Jew. So he was very familiar, of course, with the Septuagint, trans, of the Septuagint, the Greek translation um, of the, the Hebrew scripture. But he was very close still to the true meaning. And he says specifically that this, that's that the man and the woman did not come into existence, the specific form did not come into existence, you know, before the woman was taken from the first human being. Okay. So it is very important to realize that. Um, yet, yes, if we continue get to be stuck in these wrong translations, and these wrong perceptions, then it is very, very hard to see the truth, okay? I have done some more research, especially on this rib. And because again, somebody challenged me and says, oh no, it has to be a rib. Well, I did some research in my book, The Mystery of Adam, I used one source, and that source was Shane Hansen. And Shane Hansen wrote a book, uh, Fashioned for Intimacy. And in that book, she did her own research, and I kind of trusted her. And she said that that was never, never translated as um, rib in any other section. It was always translated as side. Or side chamber. Now the original word for rib was zella, z s e l a, zella. And again, that was never. I mean, I, I think seventy times, I believe. Um, I don't have it in front of me right now. Seventy times, or even more, seventy-five times. That word was translated um, as side or side chamber okay i have here uh, an article by uh wayne simpson adam's rib and he did a very lengthy study and he also came to the conclusion all the studies he did that not once except for genesis 2 that word cella was translated as rib, okay? Now, when did that come about? Again, see, when I did some research on when they translated that word ha-adam, that first word for human being, um, wrong, well, that was in the Septuagint, right? Well, no, actually, no. The Septuagint translated Ha Adam correctly into human being. However, because um, in the Greek 
culture, um, only men were human beings, right? So it was easy to perceive or come to the assumption that this first human being was a man. And so in our culture, which was so influenced you know, by Hellenistic thinking, we came to that conclusion that women were actually not humans. Um, and so we assumed, well, that first human being had to be a man. So again, going back to this rib, we see that in the Septuagint, that of course was the first time where, where Zala was translated as a rib, okay? Um, and again, all the other times Zala um, was used in the Old Testament, it was always translated as side or side chamber. So the problem came from the Septuagint, which was written over two two thousand years ago. Okay, over two thousand years ago. Now it's interesting that even a twelve uh, a monk, uh, and I used him as a source, a, a monk who lived in the twelfth century. And he was an English this sister Sian monk, sister Sian monk. And um, his name is Elred of Revolt. Okay, and I'm gonna put that um, on the section below so you have him as a reference. And he's he wrote um He's, he wrote in, in one of his books, and it's a very small one. And I, you know what? I don't know how I came across him, but it seems like the Holy Spirit just leads in, in just some wonderful ways. So he writes, how beautiful it is that the second human being was taken from the side of the first, so that nature might teach that human beings are equal. And as it were, collateral, and that there is in human affairs neither a superior nor an inferior a character, characteristic of true friendship. Now, that is written by a 12th century monk, okay, who obviously was closer to the true meaning than we are today after thousands of years of misunderstanding the truth, okay? And people just totally messing things up. So this is what I used in my book um, as a basis for my belief that this first, uh, that word, okay, should have been translated with side. In other words, and he says it clearly here, he says it clearly here, Habuva is that the second human being was taken from the side of the first so that the nature, so that nature might teach that human beings are equal. And that's a 12th century monk. It, 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 for me, that is just so amazing. So, so I used that in my book, and I came to the conclusion, of course, that God took the side of that first human being, and that that first human being was not a man, but was man and woman at the same time. In other words, all the ingredients were in that first human being, which biologically uh, just make total sense because God doesn't create a new DNA, okay? We know that men and women are different, right? They have a different DNA structure, uh, you know? And so that DNA structure was inside that first human being. The DNA structure of the man and the DNA structure of the woman was in that first human being because they were one and they were complete, okay, in that DNA structure. And 
silo is also a great um, resource because Philo also is realizing and he lived during Jesus's time and during Paul's time. And he was a Hellenistic Jew. So in other words, he was a Greek speaking Jew. Okay. He was a Hellenistic Jew, Greek speaking Jew. And he was very familiar, of course, with the Septuagint. He used the Septuagint and most likely. However, he was still very close to the true meaning. And he also believes, if you, if work, uh, if you read the works of Philo, and um, page 769, uh, sorry, 796, um, he states clearly, you know, that um, he writes, the letter of this statement is plain enough for it is expressed according to the symbol of the part, a half of the whole, each party, the man and the woman being as sections of nature co-equal for the production of that genus, which is called man. So he clearly says that, that each one has half of the whole. So this whole, the man and the woman, is the human human being, okay? Not just one alone, but both of them together. And that is what God created in the beginning. He, he created this, this whole human being, which is male and female. And of course, he divided that uh, human being. And then when he created, and Philo said that again too, is that after he divided this human being, um, so he doesn't just take the rib and transforms a rib into something else. No place do we read that. No place. I mean, people, we are scientific people. I mean, we are not, um, you know, people from 2,000 years ago. We can understand this biologically a lot better, okay? A lot better. And we, we don't have to think that God said hocus pocus to this little rib and, and, and this little rib uh, transformed into this whole other human being, okay? That is just not what happened, okay? It's just not what happened, okay? I mean, the Bible doesn't say that. And why would we believe it? Why would we believe it? It makes so much more sense that the whole, like Philo said, the whole... Um, genus um, for the production of the human being, right, was in both of them, the man and the woman. Now, how are we producing another human being by the man and the woman coming together and combining, you know, the two genetic um, information to make a new human being? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not uh, this gullible human being uh, anymore that, you know, people can just tell things. Um, so we need to think. We need to think, think very clearly. And if it's very obvious, you know, in the Bible, again, I have really looked at several, several um, resources about this rib. And I just cannot find anywhere um, anything different. Now, <laughs> what I found is this guy, uh, Sioni Sevit, distinguished professor of biblical literature and, um, and Northwest Semitic language of American Jewish University, believes. And, and that only happens because we are just translating these things and we continuously translating these things wrong. He now believes, or he makes other people believe, that no, it wasn't the rib. We know for sure it wasn't the rib because you know what? All the other things were translated 
uh, differently, especially he says that in the Septuagint, that in the Septuagint language, it was the, you know, the first time that they translated this word "sela" in in Genesis two as "rib," whereas in all the other sections of the Old Testament, it was always translated as "side." And he says, "Well, they translated, they mistranslated it. It should have been, guess what, the penis bone." Now, that is about as ridiculous as they come. You know, I thought they were ridiculous enough by saying it was a rib. But, yeah, you know what, maybe, maybe we, we, we had it coming. We, maybe we had it coming, okay? He was saying that most animals have a, a penis bone, but human beings don't have a penis bone. So he believes that... Um, the, that Eve was created from the penis bone. Now that is, you know, but again, we had it coming. We just had it coming. You know, cons constantly believing and that that first human being was a man. I mean, we can, you know, I, I think once we're uh, misguided someplace, you know, I think Satan can always use that misguided place and just derail us even more. It just happens all the time. You believe a lie that Satan dishes out and he knows you're ready for the next one. That's exactly what happened, you know, with the first woman and the first man. God tested uh, the woman to find out if she uh, was susceptible for a lie. And she was. Why? Because she believed that touching the fruit will actually, um, uh, she will die if she touches the fruit. Now, Satan didn't tell her that. Okay? Satan didn't tell her that. No! Human beings came up with that. And I don't think it was just the woman who came up with that. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. It was the man and the woman that came up with that stupid uh, belief. Oh, if we don't touch it, Guess what? We will not eat it. Okay? But when you open the door to a lie, and Satan will find out that you're gullible enough to believe a lie, then he knows he can dish out even more lies. Okay? Then he knows he's gotcha. So, this is what has happened and has happened and has happened over and over and over and over again. You start with a lie, and you will be dished out more lies, okay? First lie that was talking about, that the translation constantly goes back to a man. Oh, no, the first human being must have been a man. The first human being, you know, people get it right. There's actually some people that get it right, that in the first creation account, I don't know why, could it be that maybe because the, the NIV translated that word uh, ha adam finally as human being could that maybe be it i don't know but in the second creation account oh uh, no they had to translate it as man again they just had to do it right so yeah we are stupid enough to continue believe oh yeah it, it was a man oh no god created the man first oh sure why wouldn't it be you know what but they turn around and say well we're still equal we're still equal but no, 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 the man had to be created first. Why did the man have to be created first? I don't understand why. Okay, if you'd show me clearly, then fine, show me. But that gender did not come into existence until the second, I mean, until the division. That means when God took that, that, uh, that female, or the, or the 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 ingredients for the woman when he took that away from that first human being that's when the distinct form of the man and the woman was formed and not before that not before that now imagine taking the whole side from that first human being or even adding let's say let's add the 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 human i mean add the um woman to the man and, and mix them up again, put them together. 
you know, that's not no longer a man. It's now a mix of man and woman. And that's the way we need to see it. Okay. When he split it, and there was a split, it was not just a rib or a penis bone. Okay. There's not a penis bone either. It was the whole side. He took flesh and bone. Okay. The first man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Okay. And that's what he took both bone of bone. I mean, bone and flesh, not just a rib people. Okay. Not just a rib. So I'm going to challenge you right now. I'm going to challenge you. Please do some more research. I really want people to challenge me. You know, this guy, I didn't have time. And I really didn't want to go further with him into any argument. Now, this guy, I will probably mention him because I'm reading his book right now. And his book is supposed to be pretty good. He, the, the guy actually believes in, um, you know, gender equality. He believes in equality of men and women. He's a Bible scholar, very good Bible scholar when it comes to the New Testament. And again, he got it right. He got it right. The first human being, you know, in Genesis 1 was actually a human being. It was not a man, okay? Um, and it was male and female. And then he jumps to the second creation account. And all of a sudden, poof. You know what? The word Hada now all of a sudden means man or male. Now, how in the world can these Bible scholars just totally ignore any consistency in language? It's just beyond me. It just absolutely is beyond me. I am not even a Bible scholar. I'm not even a language scholar, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm using my logical thinking, okay? My logical thinking, all right? Come on. We can't, we can't logically think and conclude, you know, if one is this, this, and this, and this, and this. It, it's logical conclusions, people. It, sometimes that's all we need is logical conclusions, you know, to come to an understanding. But... It seems like people don't understand that. You know, if I use Ha'adam in one a chapter and I go to the next chapter and I use Ha'adam, wouldn't you think it means the same thing? It's like, why, why in the world would it change from one chapter to another? And nothing has changed, nothing whatsoever. Okay? It just... I don't understand it. But anyways, hey, if you have any idea about this word, Zella, Z-S-E-L-A, Zella, Hebrew word Zella, and you have more idea, you know, you can do some research too, because I, I'm trying to find out, you know, when in the world um, was it changed? Okay, when was that meaning changed? Um, again, in the Septuagint, I can go back that far that it was mistranslated. It was already translated into rib. And of course, after that, everybody looked at the Septuagint and they went by the Septuagint. That's just the way it went. Okay. So anyways, if you are a Bible scholar, if you are a Hebrew, original Hebrew, you know, whatever, Aramaic, I think more. No, Aramaic, Hebrew then, you know, let me know. But I will finish up for today. And yeah, let me know if you can tell me when that was changed, that meaning was changed. How in the world can anybody just think, okay, rib, side, rib, where did that come from? All right, keep thinking, keep allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you.